We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Welcome to Football is Family, a podcast dedicated to the fan and fan experience. My name is Jeremy McFarland, and I want to look at the positive behind what makes football so enjoyable to watch and follow. I want to know why you are a fan of your team, of a player, or an era of football. Whether the pros, college, or high school, I want to hear and share your stories and your love for the game. If you want to be part of this podcast, please message me on Twitter at Jeremy underscore McFarland or on Facebook at the Footballist Family Facebook page. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Football's Family Podcast. And I uh, I have a chance right now to, to admit something, and I'm going to get it off my chest. I'm, I'm a nerd, and uh, it feels good for me to say this, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm a nerd. Over on my corner, and I'm pointing over to the left, like you can see it, but I have a sound wave figure from the Transformers. <clears throat> In fact, when COVID started, they had uh, a sound wave uh, Transformer figure from Generation 1 that I've always wanted, probably since I was six years old, and I finally got it. It's over there to my left. I have a Chuck Norris figure, Bob Ross, Superman, Batman, uh, I've, I've got Batman figures all over my office. I've got, it's just, I'm, I'm a nerd and, and I'm okay with admitting it. And, and, and you know what, if, if you don't understand it, then it's, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll have to educate you. But one of the things that I've, <clears throat> I've enjoyed a lot lately is, is going back and watching the old James Bond movies. And, and I say even new ones because I've, I went back and watched all the Daniel Craig movies. Uh, you've got to watch them in order because they tell an amazing story. And um, my favorite is Pierce Bronson. But, you know, we have people like my dad, Roger Moore, and then a lot of ladies is Sean Connery. Um, and, and Timothy Dalton's actually a better Bond than what they give him credit for. And Lazenby as well is, is pretty decent. But the one thing that I enjoy about James Bond is I love the music. Number one, Tina Turner with Golden Eye was awesome. Uh, Cheryl Crow, uh, Shirley Bassett, uh, Tom Tom Jones. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of the music just just so great. In fact, I was listening to uh, I was listening to Cheryl Crow's song, and my wife walked in, didn't know what it was. She said, "Is that a James Bond song?" It just has that sound to it, you know, just that awesome sound to it. But the thing about James Bond that if people haven't watched it, they don't get it. This guy is awesome. He's a commander in the British uh, Navy. And he has all the gadgets. He is good with the ladies. He's good with the gun. Uh, he got shot once, uh, Daniel Craig, he got shot, but he's been hurt a few times. Pierce Bronson got hurt in, in one of his movies, and you can see it, uh, The World Is Not Enough. He, he got hurt in that, and you can see that, but he's smart. He's athletic. He is debonair. He he likes things shaken, not stirred. Um, he's good with his Walter PPK. He's, he's good with the cars until they blow up, because typically his cars end up broken at the very end. He's got the greatest watches. I mean, just stuff like that. So I said, how can I take my nerddom? And that's a word. That's a word. How can I take my nerddom and make it into the footballist family? Well, let's just say this. If I were to make a James Bond of NFL quarterbacks ever since the Super Bowl era, who would it be? 
is not necessarily the numbers, because we're not going to deal with numbers today. It's just if you were to look at the quarterbacks from 19, from the 1966, 67 on in that time frame and say, this is James Bond in quarterback form, who would it be? You know, each one of James Bond's aspects, his his traits, his character traits, uh, who would it be? Who would it be? Well, let's look at this. And there's going to be some debate here. And I encourage you that, that if you have anybody that you want to add to this, um, or you say, well, this is wrong, put somebody else there. I, hey, put it, send it to me at Jeremy underscore McFarland on Twitter or the Football's Family Podcast on Facebook. Um, also, while you're at it, go to uh, go to the sportshistorynetwork.com and look at the other great podcasts that we have here. Uh, let them know how, how much you appreciate their great work because we have some amazing podcasts, uh, and I'm just happy to be part of that number. But if I were to say James Bond, of an NFL quarterback, who would it be? Tough. Bond is tough. Daniel Craig's Bond is the toughest of them all because I've seen that Joker run through walls. Tough. He even caught a gun. Somebody threw a gun at him, caught it, and he threw it back. He was just that tough. Um, who would it be? And there's a lot of several different tough quarterbacks. But I think of people like Donovan McNabb, you know, he, when he played for Philadelphia. But the moment he got drafted, uh, the people from Philly wanted Ricky Williams. You got down to him and you booed him on one of the biggest days of his life. That guy took you to a Super Bowl. Now, he didn't throw up in the Super Bowl, but there's, you know, there's something to be said about how tough he was. How tough he was, not only physically, but mentally. Steve McNair, one of my personal favorites. One thing about Steve McNair that I enjoy watching is you didn't know he was hurting. Now, when you come back later on and watch a lot of the videos of him playing, you found out that he was hurting a lot. And there were times where he couldn't play. But there was a saying that Jeff Fisher would tell people that if Steve took a nap before a game, he would play. He was tough. His body took a beating, but he was tough. Johnny Unitas, Jack Gilden's book about Shula and, and Johnny, really uh, woke me up to it. I knew Johnny Unitas was a good quarterback. It probably, probably one of the best, if not the best of all time. But I didn't realize just how tough he was. Wasn't a very big guy. Wasn't a very athletic guy. But he was mentally and physically tough. Probably played a little longer than he should have. But he was very tough. Brett Favre, well, I mean, he had the consecutive games record. Eli Manning as well, but Brett Favre uh, played through so many injuries. In fact, the only reason why he stopped playing was because of well, because he was getting older. But yeah, but the uh, New Orleans Saints with their with their uh, you know their hit squad basically with Greg Williams hurt him. It's just it's amazing to see how tough Brett Favre was. Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman endured a lot of problems, a lot of concussions, probably way too many, and you can probably tell it by looking at him that he's still suffering from them. But Troy Aikman was a very tough quarterback. And finally, uh, to me, Terry Bradshaw was an extremely tough quarterback. He got his tooth knocked out, basically, in the middle of a game. Uh, he endured a lot because they had the, the rules back in the 70s and early 80s were not like they are now. So those are some of the toughest quarterbacks that I can think of. And, of course, there's many more that you can look at and say these are tough quarterbacks. But that aspect of James Bond, these men, to me, fulfill. Smart. Bond is smart. Bond is smart. There's a scene, uh, there's a scene in, in uh, one of Pierce Bronson's movies where he figured out that he was, somebody was being spied or he was being spied on by somebody by just looking around and just looking at the room. I mean, he figured it out. Tomorrow never dies, and, and world is not enough. The things that Pierce Bronson does in those movies shows just how amazingly smart Bond is. You know, uh, 
uh, Sean Connery's version and Daniel Craig's version. It just shows, shows how smart they are. And there's two guys that I think of that when I think of intelligence, Joe Montana and, and Peyton Manning. Now, there's many more that you can look at and see how smart they were. But if you were talking about just pure intelligence, it's those two guys. And I'm not saying that the rest of them are dumb. I'm just saying football smart. And here's why. Joe Montana understood that he didn't have the strongest arm, but he had placement. He knew where people were going to be. In fact, the pass uh, with Dwight Clark, the catch, he knew how high Dwight Clark could jump. And he put it where only Dwight Clark could catch it. Now, when you also think of a person like Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning's intelligence, his football IQ is through the roof. It's through the roof. I mean, he knew how to call uh, people out of place, and he would he would audible the line and get into a better place. And sometimes I've seen – I was wondering why he would do this, but he would put worse plays and audible in the worst plays to set up a better play. It's just amazing to watch him play. And Tony Dungy let him do it, and he knew. Let Peyton do what he did. Let him do that. Drew Brees was one of the most intelligent – player. Breeze didn't have the arm strength, but he knew where to put the ball. He had that type of intelligence that if you think about it, very few quarterbacks really do. And a lot of the intelligence that you'll find with these men. Now, Peyton Manning had a strong rocket arm, as he said, but a lot of the intelligent quarterbacks that would rely upon their skill and placement is to overcome uh, a lack of arm strength. You know, you you think of Russell Wilson, who's a very intelligent quarterback. He had a pretty strong arm, but he doesn't have the strongest arm in the NFL. But you look how smart he is. You look at how great he is at calling plays and calling checkdowns and and all these things. That's, to me, the James Bond of quarterbacks, as that intelligence. Those men, many more, just fulfill that. Making something out of nothing. This right here. (laughs) The the Super Bowl with the Chiefs versus the uh, the Buccaneers. Patrick Mahomes is a wizard as a quarterback. Watching him throw sidearm as he's falling to the ground just amazes me how he could take something like that, like those plays, and, and make something out of nothing. He could do that. The thing is, you pay Patrick Mahomes $50 million, you expect him to do that. But he took that team on his on his back and nearly came back. Now he came against a buzzsaw against the Buccaneers. But Patrick Mahomes, you know, James Bond can make uh, you know, one of my favorite ones, Goldeneye. He took a, a situation where he was, well, I'm not gonna give it away, but at the very beginning, he made something out of nothing, got away from the bad guys. Uh, that's Bond to me, and that's Patrick Mahomes to me. Quickly, I want to look at a few more. All the weapons. Bond has all the weapons. It's just amazing what the Q branch gives him. I mean, just beautiful guns and cars. Cars, oh, my goodness. Uh, I had to buy uh, the car, the James Bond car on Grand Theft Auto because I wanted to be Bond. You know, you buy the tuxedo and you buy the car. You have all the weapons. Look at these men uh, over the past 40 years or 50 years, who had all the weapons? And there's many, many more. I mean, trust me, but I want to look at three men. Michael Vick. He has intelligence. Now, I don't agree with what he did, but I'm talking about football right now. He had speed. Oh, my goodness, how amazing is his, is, are, 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 is his footsteps, his, his, his movement down below his waist. He had Barry Sanders' uh, hip swivel. He had speed. He had quickness. He had the ability to check down, look at two or three different places within just a second, and then break off to the left. And his arm strength, oh, it's a thing of beauty. I'm using him now as my starting quarterback in Madden 22. And watching his arm, oh, you just think how much better would his – how great would he have been if he hadn't missed those two years? Even now, right now. Lamar Jackson, to me, is a better player than Michael Vick. Maybe not as fast, but he has all the weapons that you could think of. He has the 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 smart, the 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 skill, the arm, 
his, he's working on his accuracy, but he is so good at figuring out the lanes to run makes playing Lamar Jackson such a burden for the defense because they not only have to worry about his his arm strength, but they have to worry about his feet. And sometimes if you can draw a defense, you can draw a secondary into you because they think that you're going to run, just throw a pass over their head. Uh, it's making such mobile quarterbacks such a problem. Aaron Rodgers, not a big Aaron Rodgers fan, so I'll admit that. I think he's a little bit over dramatic. But I can't knock the skill. Dude just got paid. He just got paid. Um, he is one of the luckiest quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. How many last second Hail Marys has he completed in his in his career to win games? I mean, just amazing. He does he doesn't run because he's 36 year old and he will die. I understand that. I'm 42, and I know that if I were to run and get nailed by a 300 pound lineman, I might die too. But he has the ability to make a play last longer, which would – the longer a play stays in the pocket or outside the pocket, the more likely the secondary is going to lose coverage and a player like a Michael Vick or like a Lamar Jackson or like an Aaron Rodgers will find an open receiver more often than not. You know, Bond has all the weapons. Well, these men have all the weapons. Never over. Bond's going to win. Bond's going to win. It's never over. To me, the epitome of this concept of never over is John Elway. Look at all his fourth quarter comebacks. My favorite of all time. And they didn't win the game with this. They tied the game. But my favorite of all time is, is the playoff game against the uh, Cleveland Browns where he goes 98 yards in two minutes, the drive. I remember going to Canton, Ohio and seeing – the, the jersey that he wore. That shows you what type of player he was. He said, as long as I have the ball, the game is not over. As long as Bond is upright, the fight is not over. As long as the game is online, John Elway. Would you want John Elway to be the guy to take you back? Yeah, I would. I would. Because nine times out of ten, he'll win the game. Not rattled. Bond is never rattled. He always has a witty comeback or, or, or he knows what he's going to do next. These men right here, in my opinion, were never rattled. Now, I'm going to put this out here and people are like, oh, I can't believe this. Jay Cutler is one of my favorite players, and that's just the way it is. Cutler didn't care. He really wasn't. He would throw an interception or two or three, and he'll come back and throw a touchdown. He was never rattled. Kurt Warner, when Trent Green went down, and Dick Vermeil said we're going to rally around Kurt Warner, he could have been rattled, and we see what happened. He won a Super Bowl. Jim McMahon, God wasn't the greatest passer, but I can guarantee you that he knew how to win games. Jim McMahon. Dan Fouts, never rattled. Great quarterback. And this guy right here that I'm going to mention, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but now looking back, I appreciate it a whole lot more. Doug Williams. When he won the Super Bowl against my Broncos, 42-10, people were saying that black quarterbacks cannot win a big game, can't win the Super Bowl for whatever reason, which is absolutely ludicrous. Doug Williams proved them wrong. He went nuts in the second quarter. He showed the NFL. Again, I'm not happy that my Broncos lost, but I respect what Doug Williams did. He showed that people, color doesn't matter. It's the skill of the player. And Doug Williams was the best player that in that game. It was an amazing, amazing game. Doug Williams wasn't rattled. I respect that. Bond has to have an arch enemy. He's got to have the Dr. Evil, which is not Bond, but it's, it's a parody of Bond. He's got to have the bad guy. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. You either love him or hate him. There's your bad guys. And he's got to have the Q branch. You got to have Q with all the weapons, with all the with all the cool things that will come back to play. Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs, you have two wizards playing quarterback for you. Give them the weapons that they need. Now they got it in a lot of ways, but keep them upright. 
You know, guys, keep this in mind, Cincinnati Bengals, draft a an offensive line for Joe Burrow. Jamar Chase is a beast. But Joe Burrow is going to die if you cannot give him. Panay Sua would have been a great pick for you this, this past year. You got the right one. Jamar Chase is awesome. And he's going to be awesome for several years. But Joe Burrow needs help. He needs help. Baltimore, you have Lamar. Lamar is going to be your your quarterback for several years. Kansas City, you just paid you just paid Patrick Mahomes a major load of money. Lamar is going to get a lot of money too. By the way, give them the things that they need. And by the way, point this out here before I finish. Green Bay, Jordan Love's not getting the opportunity to play. You're going to probably trade him, but that pick in the first round, you needed to give Aaron something to play with. You needed to give him something to play with. Be the Q branch and give your bond the tools to play with. You know, he's going to win. He's going to win. That's what bond does. And if you want your quarterback to be bond, give him the toys, the tools to play with. Right now, in the back of my head, I'm thinking of the song Living Daylights by AHA. It's just an amazing uh Amazing song. By the way, Shirley Bassett, if you have not listened to any Shirley Bassett song, her voice is amazing. Cheryl Crow, Cheryl Crow, if you're listening, uh, there's a lot of love coming from Hurricane Mill, Tennessee, towards you. Just keep that in mind. Bond is one of my favorites, and, and I hope he is to you. But I'm looking at the NFL quarterbacks and their aspects of Bond. There's some good James Bonds out there. Thank you all for listening to Football's Family. This podcast is sponsored by Play Classic Sports Simulation Board Games, spelled with two A's, P-L-A-A-Y. Realistic board game recreations of professional football, hockey, baseball, NASCAR, golf, and more. They cover nine sports in all, with a tenth, basketball, coming in 2022. You can relive great sessions of the past, create what if matchups from different eras, and much more. It's fun. So, if you're into sports history, you should check them out. That's play with two A's, P L A A Y, classic.com. And don't forget to use the code SHN at checkout and get 10% off your first order. Hey, are you ready for some football? Some fantasy football? How about some daily fantasy football? Silly questions, right? Of course you are. You're ready to talk some smack and win some cash every Sunday, and Thursday, and Monday, and whenever there's football games. The Sports History Network invites you to play your daily fantasy football this season at thrivefantasy.com. Thrive Fantasy offers hundreds of thousands, millions in cash every day on NBA, MLB, PGA Golf, Cricket, Esports, and of course, NFL football. And just to get the 2021 NFL season started right, Thrive Fantasy is holding its $100,000 guaranteed contest with a $20,000 first prize. Sign up with Thrive Fantasy today to get a 100% match bonus on your first deposit for up to $100 in free daily fantasy football play. Visit sportshistorynetwork.com slash thrive. That's T-H-R-I-V-E. Or enter promo code SHN when depositing at the cashier. Join Thrive Fantasy today, earn cash prizes, and support great shows like this at the Sports History Network. Now that's a win-win-win situation for you to kick off your own NFL season. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique 
unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.